Corner to Corner podcast. My name's Jeff, and I'm joined as always by my good friend Paul over there. Yes, hi, that's me. Hello. <laughs> how are you doing? How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty good actually. I'm. I'm kind of hyper because I've just finished my coffee, so uh, there might be a little bit of buzzing going on. A little bit of okay. drumming. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Just, just keep your headphones on. Yes. Yes, I will good. do that. Good. I'll good. do that on oh, my ears, obviously, yeah. not anywhere yes. else. Okay. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying that, Jeff. Excellent. <laughs> so uh, we have a very special guest with us this morning don't we, we? do i'm very excited this we also are. adds to my excitement yes, yes massively yeah. so uh, we're joined by um a man who's done a huge amount on screen and on stage over huge. his uh, his long career and to whovians the world over uh, he's our other favorite canine companion uh, it's mr <laughs> craig ells how you doing guys yeah good Hello, morning craig. how are you I'm good thank you yeah not too bad at all Good, good. Thank you for joining us on uh, this very wet morning. Oh, it oh, is no. horrible, isn't Thanks it? Thanks for having me. It is, and it was lovely to be indoors with a nice cup of coffee chatting to you guys. I'm more than <laughs> <laughs> good. It's not a bad way to, to get the morning going, I don't exactly. think, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, we've got quite a few questions for you, Craig. Oh, some do. from us and some from our, our listeners as well. Mm. So um, we're just going to kick it off by asking you, what is it like being Carvanista? Oh, that's a big one to start with. Look at that. It's, it's amazing. What's it like as in, in terms of, in, in general or in, in sort of physically or, or in the uh, in, in general, we'll get to the uh, costume stuff in, in a little yeah, we'll, bit. We'll, but, we'll know, focus on the physical yeah. stuff in a minute. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, uh, we'll undermine that pain. We'll just explore <laughs> that. <area. laughs> yeah, focus we'll on get that, to the yeah. nitty-gritty soon. Being Carvanista was, I'm sure it's no surprise to anybody, an absolute joy. It really was. You know, to, to get to create a brand new character yeah. for the universe is amazing. You know, it's... Uh, and particularly this storyline, which I've often thought, how has that never been done before? What an amazing <laughs> idea to have the, yeah. the, the ultimate version of man's best friend just yeah. sort of rocking up and saving the world. And everyone's got their own individual human. It was brilliant. It was absolutely, it was class. Um, so, yeah, when you start to read the scripts and you know the character, it, it was just fantastic. Yeah. From start to finish, it was just brilliant. As the storylines unfolded and we got the next script and you realize what was going to happen next, it was just, yeah, it was pure joy. <laughs> yeah, he's become hugely popular. He's become a massive favourite, yeah, isn't he? Which is always a relief because you know when you're sort of like putting out a new character into the world and you yeah, know yeah. how precious the the the, uh, the program is. Mm. You just want people to like it. You want people to take to him. You want you want to make sure that you're getting it right. I suppose you know. Yeah, yeah. He was he was such a, a great addition to it. He was brilliant. So, how how did the part become yours? Did you have to audition for it, or you know? Yeah, audition for the audition for the role. Mm. Obviously, just that they put the jigsaw piece together, see who's going to be right against every other actor, and 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 yeah, lucky enough to get the gig. <laughs> Literally lucky enough to get the gig. It's one of those jobs. If Doctor yeah. Who, calls, it's a bit like being asked to play for your country. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. oh boy, okay, here we go. Here we go right. now. This is it. This, yeah. this is the thing. They they didn't have to make you wear any sort of prosthetics, or like a dog mask or anything like that, when you're doing your audition, did you? The audition? No, no. no. <laughs> Just made my own with a bit of bacon and a bit of sort of... Yeah. It was all very Lady Gaga. That, that would be quite hilarious. Can you imagine that? Uh, yeah, please bring a dog mask or a Wookiee mask or, or something yeah. like that. Exactly. If you could yeah. please provide your own fur on the day, that would be... Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a pretty fulsome beard you got there going on, Craig. That's it. See, this is as much as I could do. Yeah. <laughs> Just lacks a, a little button nose, little wet nose, you know what I mean? No, nope, there's nothing, there's nothing <laughs> about my nose, unfortunately. Uh, there's, a, there's a little sound effect when Dan rubs your, your nose in <laughs> Halloween is Apocalypse, that. isn't it? Yeah. Or something. <laughs> it's so silly, but I love it. No idea they were going to do that. It was fantastic. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of people's favourite moment as well, isn't yeah. it? Sort yeah. of little sort of nose boop. A lot yeah. of people love that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's lovely, yeah. They kind of add to the personality of the character, don't they? And, and the, the, the sort of warmth of that. The, I say warmth. It is a warm relationship between... I was going to say, John, between Dan and yeah. Carvanista, isn't it? You know, they, they argue and they pretend to hate each other. But actually, it's kind of like, it's a bit of a bromance going on, I think. Yeah. Well, and that's one of the things, because we, we didn't do a sort of chemistry test, so to speak. You know, it was, right. that was very much something that you hope will happen. And if it mm. is going to happen, will just happen on the day. You know, it, it either will or it won't. And we were really lucky, whether it's because John and I were both scousers or I, I'm not sure. But um, but we didn't, we didn't meet, or yeah. rather John didn't meet, Craig, until weeks into the to the uh, to the shoot, because <laughs> really? I'd have to arrive so early in the morning, obviously mm. to be in the chair for about well, in the in the first few times we did it, I was in the chair for about half past four in the morning while they oh my goodness. put everything on, and of course everyone else runs in about half seven, eight o'clock, ready to film. 
Mm-hmm. And they all leave at five or six o'clock at night when it's time to, to finish. I've got to go back in the chair and have it all carefully oh, taken off. Yeah. Like so I didn't see anybody yeah. for weeks. So then one, when I finally did meet John, I sort of walked up to him and went hello. And he was a bit like, hi. I was like, who the hell are you? It's great. It's covered in Oh, my God. You know, yeah. So, but yeah, the, on, the on-screen chemistry thing was, was a real blessing, really. I mean, John's fantastic. He, as you mm-hmm. can imagine, he's a very, very warm individual, very fun. Yeah. Everybody loved him on set. He brings his own individual energy with him. And it's not... It's not difficult to like him or get on mm. with him or for him to make you feel very comfortable. So from day one, it, yeah, it just worked. We, we yeah. were very lucky. It it's, it's, uh, comes across as, you know, real kind of you know genuine friendship bond between the, the two characters and, and therefore you two off screen as well. And, um, yeah. you know, like, like you were saying, Paul, it starts kind of, you know, they, mm. they don't like each other and it's a sort of begrudging you know sort of respect and friendship and then i think it, it grows really nicely across yeah. the, the, the series um, yeah it was and, one of my favorite um, things about reading those the, the scripts for the first time was just how you know obviously carvin he's the he's a lupari he, he's his mission his, his life mission is to yeah. save mankind he has his human and i just love the fact that he was just a bit annoyed about that really yeah <laughs> not, not happy with his uh his this, lot there, I wasn't don't even... <laughs> and then obviously he meets dan and he's like oh my god and look at he's just ridiculous but then you're right then that friendship sort of grows as, mm. time. as we as the audience obviously yeah first meet carvin easter you, you know and they're, and they're hanging over the acid ocean and we're thinking oh my god who's this guy oh that's mm. right yeah yeah you sort of think well he's a bad mm. he's gonna be yeah, a bad guy. you've got the sort of uh, you know, hat type some thing, weird helmet, you? can't yeah, space you don't, helmet. You don't thing. really see see you clearly yeah. at mm. that point. It's almost silhouette, isn't it? Yeah, you really see. And then the next thing you know, he's got Dan, and he's sort of he's just got the stun cube on him, and then he's put him in a cage. Everyone's thinking, who's this bad character? Mm. And then, very mm. cleverly, thanks to Chris, you realise that oh no, he's he's going to be you know a hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really and then of course he comes back later on, doesn't he? He comes back in the kind of flashback ish. Yeah. sort of sequence mm. so he's clearly and, and i think we know he's got a bit of a history with the doctor and That's then we right, see yeah. a bit more of that deeper history so there's there's obviously a lot more to the character than, than yeah than i think thought. so i sort of hope that in whatever capacity is whether it's sort of in the, the audio drama mm. range or, or, or in some way that we do get to see that at some point because that would mm. be really nice to sort of see the origins the origin story you know yeah hurrah jeff's got thumbs <laughs> yeah. up already look at that <laughs> yeah. and, that, and that's not me giving anything away i don't know anything i've not been approached no. <laughs> just for the record but um, but obviously yeah if i was ever asked i would jump at the chance because i think there's a yeah, lot more to be yeah. to be mined there with that character yeah there the definitely is but you know both you, bef- before well there's kind of three uh things really i guess you know what mm. leads up to the um you know the scene hanging over the acid planet. There. Oh yeah, true stuff yeah, yeah. with the fugitive doctor. Mm. Exactly know, from whenever that was, and then yeah. anything you know afterwards as well. I'd like to think that post flux, you know, there could have been some more adventures. You know, before or before yeah. you became a sea devil, for example. <laughs> <laughs> before that right, transfer, I was ready for a change. <laughs> but you're right. That sort of last shot that you see of Carvin mm. Bell and Vinder and the Ood as it sort of pans out, you sort of think. Hang on a minute. They, you know, where are they going? Mm. Yeah, I, yeah. I want to know. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> someone asked, actually, when when's the spin-off series with with you three coming? Exactly. I've been asked that quite a few times. It's really? Like, I mean, yeah. Yeah, different conventions and things that I've done. People always say, well, you know, when's that going to happen? Mm. And I'm like, don't know. <laughs> keep keep putting it out there. But isn't it, it, does it feel nice that, you know, like you said, you were... You, you start a character and, and and you worry a little bit about what the reaction's going to be. Yeah. But when you've got people saying to you, you know, are you, when's the spin-off coming and when's this going to happen? And, you know, you, yeah. you've been uh, accepted and, you know, the, the, the character and the performance have been loved by people. It must be quite nice, I reckon. Yeah, I, I guess because we live in the world of social media, you you, mm-hmm. you get that instant sort of feedback if you will you know and yeah. if you try and not go on and have a look you do you want to know you know, the people are liking it and they're enjoying it and, and and that's another reason why the convention's really nice i did one mm. in february called gallifrey one oh there. yes yes yeah which is absolutely unbelievable yeah yeah but um there's there's something amazing about getting that feedback like you say and finding out that people have enjoyed the story your character because i've done some theater in the past and Obviously, you, you turn up at the theatre, you do the show. There's a round of applause. People yeah. come to meet you at the stage door. There's a, there's like an instant gratification and also mm-hmm. like an instant commentary. Whereas when you film, you know, you turn up 
they stick a big dog costume on you. <laughs> you sweat for 10 hours, then you take yeah. it off and you go home and you think, I hope, I hope that's okay. So to do the conventions and actually stand there and have people talk about their yeah. experience, what it meant to them, how important it is, how much they enjoyed it, yeah. is really special, actually. It's very, very special indeed. Yeah, it, it must, it's, it's quite a delayed uh, response process yeah. in a way, isn't it? Yeah. You know, like you said, theatre is very immediate. You know, you get the round of applause of people at the stage door and stuff like that. But TV, you know, you might shoot something and they're not, it doesn't Months go out later. for ages. Yeah. You know? That's it. Yeah. yeah. Because so I think when we were shooting it, we knew it was going to be coming out on Halloween. Um, so we were just all geared towards that. So, and of course, on the, you know, on the night, Mm. When the first episode you watch with bated breath, and then obviously Twitter starts pinging all yeah. these, like, oh, yeah. what are they going to say? And instantly, there was the Chewbacca references, or yeah, of course, I yeah, I was called War Bungle at one point, which made oh, me- okay, <laughs> <laughs> I've never thought that one, that's great. <laughs> which I thought was, and all the different memes came out, and I thought, yeah, oh, here we go. But luckily, in the main, yeah. I think the sort of really, um, strong Hoovians, all the sort of the uh, the proper fans seem to really yeah. enjoy it. And yeah. like character, and thought that it fitted in, and yeah, which is always which always means a lot when you've sort yeah, of yeah, yeah. work out there, you know. Yeah, I, I hadn't yeah. seen the war bungle thing. No, That's I hadn't seen that one. You know, Funnily enough, at home the other day, we were clearing out a load of stuff, and um, we found uh, a zippy teddy. Or, or oh. my, my wife had been yeah. given it, and um, my kids were like, "What's this?" So I showed them Rainbow on on YouTube. <laughs> well, they like uh, that. Why would you yeah, do that? and I was like, "Look, he's called Jeffrey as well." And they and they're like, "Oh, it's like Dad." And uh, they were like, "What's that big bear thing? What's what's the pink thing?" You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a hit, though, of course. Oh, right. Of course it is. Yeah, yeah obviously. Yeah. 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 It freaked me out when I was a kid. I know. Yeah, well, that's the thing. But you look back now and you, we just sort of watched it. We were like, "Oh yeah, it's the pink one." Yeah. And, and now you sort of think, "Oh my God," you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, we all Scarf turned out fine, life. though, I think. you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, totally yeah. fine. Yeah, look at me. <laughs> ah! <laughs> just don't <laughs> show me any pink us. hippos or people with zips <laughs> yeah. in their mouths. Yeah. That's just freaky. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, uh, Craig, we've got a question from Fraser Gregory on Twitter. Um, oh, he's yes. got another, another question later as well. Um, but he says his favourite thing about Carvin is that he was a gruff, gruff <laughs> northerner. <laughs> Was yeah. he written that way, or was it a directorial <laughs> acting choice? And and were you inspired by any other characters on on screen for it? Okay, well, hi Fraser. First of all, um, thank you for your question. And it was one of those things when I got the job, and they were sort of driving down to uh, to Cardiff to start filming. I was playing around with a few more voices, and I was thinking, mm. well, you know, maybe I should do a re- you know, there could be this carbonista sort of, or really just different kind of crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. Elements, voices. And then the director walked in while I was having my first costume fit in. And he just went, just when I did with Jamie, he said, oh, just, yeah. uh, want, I said, I'm just thinking about voices and, and what to do. And he said, oh, I was thinking maybe, maybe sort of Northern and sort of Griffin. I said, yes, <laughs> let's go with that then. So then <laughs> played around with that a bit more. And then, yeah. yeah. And we sort of came up with, with that final voice. It's the, a lot of it was informed by the costume, to be honest. Mm. I don't know if that's going to ruin another question that might be coming up, but um, no, no, it's good. Yeah, lots of it was sort of because once you've got all that on, yeah, you, yeah, you feel cool. a lot heavier, mm, set, mm. feel a lot more robust and a lot more a lot gruffer, you know. And obviously he's he's a warrior, you know. Yeah, so yeah. You, you've got to try and find all, all of that and give him a voice that makes him believable, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, it needs to be the right voice to come out of that face and that body, doesn't it? Mm. You know? Exactly, yeah. And I, and I also quite like the idea, I know Chris did as well, this was very important to Chris, that, that he looked as cute as possible. Yeah. So then when he opened his mouth, he sort yeah. of thought, oh, you know, <laughs> sort of, and, and I just think that northern gruffness lent itself perfectly to that, sort of, for, it's just to really cut against that exterior yeah yeah, yeah. it's yeah. a nice juxtaposition on it yeah and, and it's interesting what you said there about you know having the costume and things on because we spoke to sam sprawl a while ago oh, you yeah. know, the swarm and he said very similar mm. you know once he put everything on it it, it he was kind of partly forced up, to it? walk the certain way because of the heels and the contacts and stuff but yeah. you know the look of it you know in in kind of in um you know informed how he stood and he, he walked and stuff and also he said it was the same for him uh it was weeks into filming when, when the other cast saw him without his makeup on yeah. and, and they didn't know who he was. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. But he, it was a fantastic performance by Sam, wasn't it? It was an yeah. absolutely brilliant performance. Um, as were they all really across that. They were, yeah. yeah. There was a lot of terrific performances. But he, um, yeah, th- there is something, once that goes on, mm. 
I mean, sometimes there are limitations with what you can do. You could imagine with a carbonista mask, because it was all prosthetics and it came in separate parts. Right. There would be a bit that went sort of over yeah. my nose and forehead, a bit that sort of went here, a bit that went on my chin, so that when I moved my face, you could still get some sense of yeah, yeah. movement. Yeah. yeah. But of course, there was so much fur around the mouth and it was stuck <laughs> to my face, so it would it would limit the, you know, there's what, there's what you could say, really. So we yeah. did do quite a bit in ADR as oh, well. I was just going to ask that, yeah. yeah. Just charity, you know, you sort of have to do those sort of things. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I was going. I was going to say as well, actually, just just on that subject, because one one of the, the one one of the big factors towards Carvinista's personality is is also his body language, and yeah. you know the, the the movements of the head, you know the sort of gruffness of the shoulders, coupled with the voice and everything else, yeah. and it's it's quite a testament, I think, to your to your acting skills, Craig, to kind of have all of that with the voice and wear that massive suit plus the face and everything else, and just personify everything about that character. I think it's tremendous. Mm. Oh, yeah, thank we, you so much. We had a, a couple Sorry, of questions, the actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other touches mm. are, you know, apart, the costume obviously was made by the fantastic costume department and all the yeah. set was made by that fantastic team. But those little touches, the moves are, they, they came from me. I remember sort of saying to the director, you know, I've, I've got a dog. And when they do, if they are confused, there will be a little head tilt. Yeah, like, put that in? And he said, yeah. yeah. And Jamie Magnus Stone said, oh, yeah, put it in. And I said, you know, when the, when the axe doesn't work, there would be a bit yeah. of maybe, you know, dogs would just sniff everything, if whatever, sniff, yeah. sniff things. It was like, yeah, yeah, put it in. So those little touches. And do you remember the scene where, where Dan and Carvinista fell from the rocket into the into the Mersey? Yes. yes. Yeah, through the chute. And, and then we climb out. And there's a bit where he's trying to dry himself off. And I just sort of shake yes. my like that. <laughs> so little moments like that. Really, yeah. yeah. And Jamie was open to all those suggestions and those different ideas yeah. just to make him as, as canine as possible, given yeah. the fact that he... To all intents and purposes, as a human frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 How, how did you shoot that uh, waste shoots mm. scene? Because it's so brilliant. Did they, did they throw you into the Mersey? Please say yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Comes with the territory, unfortunately. You know. <laughs> That's yeah. the contract. Could, could you swim in that suit? That's the oh, question. <laughs> I would have swim in that water. Jeez. Yeah, exactly. No, thank you. The, um, that scene was one of my favourite scenes to shoot, actually. Was it? Yeah. It's the evac tube, because. It was basically in, in one of the sort of hangars where, we, where they film sometimes, there was just a huge plastic tube. Yeah. And then <laughs> essentially a massive skateboard with, with a rope attached to one end. Right. And a sort of the cameraman sat on one end with the camera like this. <laughs> no. And I was helped carefully in, in all that costume yeah. sort of to lay down on my front at the other end and sort of face on. And then literally they said, action. And a team of guys pulled the rope, the skateboard got through, and we just screamed. Oh. <laughs> it was hysterical. <laughs> it was amazing. I love that, you know, you, you oh. see it on screen, it looks so exciting and, you know, it's brilliant. But then you find out, you know, you're on a skateboard being pulled on a piece of rope. I, I, think, yeah. brilliant. I, I, I love the fact that no matter how brilliant CGI gets and technological wizardry and all the rest of it, sometimes you just need a guy pulling you on a rope <laughs> down yeah. a tunnel with a camera pointing at your face. Exactly. Brilliant. Then when you watch it, it works. I mean, it's just oh, a short moment, but yeah. it works perfectly. Yeah, absolutely. It's brilliant, yeah. And I, I trust that you asked for another couple of takes on that as well. You know, <laughs> you know didn't go quite right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even when my costume came off, I was like, one more go. Come on, yeah. one more. <laughs> let me add it. Let me add yeah, it. Yeah, I'll do some of that. <laughs> so, um, I've got a question here from Catherine Sarah Cullum Hanshaw, and she asks, How long did the makeup take to put mm. on and, uh, and take off? I think the first time, obviously, it took longer than, than yeah, yeah, yeah. any other time before. I think we, we got it down to just over two hours. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, but Danny Maria and her prosthetics team mm. are incredible. They're absolutely incredible. And the, the sort of the care of me as the actor, it wasn't just yeah. sort of like, you know, whack on the cop. <laughs> yeah. It would literally, there was such care, such precision. And it, there was a couple of different versions of the mask, obviously, because one would be cleaned. But I think sometimes they got to a point where they couldn't be used again and another one would have to be created. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, and also, which people might not know, and I'm, I'm sure Danny won't mind me saying, is it all went on plain and they used sort of spray paint, fine paint, to do the colouring on the oh, really? uh, on the fur. Yeah, it went oh, on. Wow. Oh, wow. And they designed it for that attention to detail and to sort of get the right colour in the right shades, yeah. the blend for an actual dog. Yeah, the level of precision and professionalism was off the scale. Yeah, that's incredible, that. Yeah. 
Um, what was it like filming during COVID? Because, you know, I've done a bit of filming during it and, yeah. you know, it was a pain. Isn't it? <laughs> so what, what was it like for you guys? Because I know, you know, when we spoke to Chris, you know, he mm. designed Flux to work within, you know, the restrictions and stuff. But yeah, you know, just actually how, doing how did, it. Must yeah. Be. How did you find it just day to day? It was a bit weird. I think naturally, as you know, actors, we are social beings. So it means yeah. not being able to mix anyway was hard. If you add on the costume, which also mm. puts a barrier between you and other human beings, and the fact that you're not really allowed to be that near each other. Yeah, it was too many, lot, wasn't it? That, too many restrictions. That's strange. Mm. I guess the, the only thing was we were all tested rigorously, you know, yeah. numerous times a week to make sure the production wouldn't have to shut down. So once we were all safe and we were all, mm. you know, it kind of became our filming bubble. Once we mm. were all there, we were okay. But again, because we weren't really encouraged to mingle, Everyone would just go their separate ways at the end of the day. Yeah. So I've known I've known Jody for years. We did a play together, donkeys years ago now, and we were so excited to work with each other. <laughs> of course, she was the one person that really couldn't mingle with her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she would literally just be there, gone, there, gone. So that was, I mean, it relaxed a bit toward the end, I guess, as yeah, we saw yeah, yeah. Out the other side of it. But initially, it was very much we want to get this shot, we want to get this done. And yeah, everybody just did everything they could to make sure that happened. Yeah, you've you know, got to the, minimize we, the risk, isn't it? Because yeah. somebody gets it and that's could be the never, end of the never shut down, did it? Mm. There, there was no shutdown. And, you know, we said this on the podcast before, but the, the, the fact that we got a series at all during COVID is, you know, incredible. Really something. And yeah. it was as great <laughs> it as was it a was. was a blinder. You know, <laughs> so, yeah. uh, you know, everyone went over and above to mm. deliver there for us as us fans and you know we're... Well, it was amazing and also on a, on a personal level as an actor mm. it's very scary that time when everything mm. like, my wife does a lot of theater and, and right, yeah the theater's just closed that was yeah, it yeah they did didn't they yeah yeah we, so and we didn't know even regards filming when that was going to pick up again when it was going to mm. happen so the fact that <clears throat> it did because we, we saw lockdown end of march beginning of april and then this doctor who that all started to happen for me in the September, yeah. it was, I think it had extra meaning really, you know, not only was it Doctor Who, not only was it, you know, going to be part of that show, but also just from practical level, I was working. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it, it was tough, wasn't it? You know, in that, in that time, you know, I remember my April was lined up to be really good. We had some events to cover, you know, yeah. remember live events and then, you know, mm. just gone. And, yeah. and, you know, you look at the, the diary and you think, oh my God, what, what am I going to do? You know, know, and yeah, it's quite. It was quite a scary time. I mean, for everyone, but yeah, you know, when your, you know, your work has stopped, it mm. it's an extra thing to, to yeah. worry about on top of it. Yeah, because a lot of my mates have sort of got proper jobs, you know, and yeah. they, you know, they were obviously think people got furloughed and mm. other different things that happened. But for us, it was. I mean, it all feels like a bit like a dream now. You look back, it, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Do you remember when yeah. we were told we could leave the house for an hour a day? Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's just I it's it's mental madness. Now, yeah. Yeah. I remember going for a walk and, you know, sort of moving out, of, well out of somebody's way who's coming in the other direction. Yeah. You know, that first goodness. time you ever sort of ventured on a train again or near someone and you suddenly mm. stood it weird. a metre yeah. away and you were thinking... Oh. Yeah, you yeah. get a bit nervous about it. I, I remember taking my kids out for a walk and um, we had a wagon thing that we pulled the twin girls in. Yeah. And uh, we went out and they saw somebody else yeah. walking on the other side of the road. And they got so excited. They were only like... Two, two and a half at the time. Yeah. But the, oh, I thought, oh, they haven't seen anyone yeah. for ages. I mean, you know, unfortunately, they don't kind of remember any of it, really. My, my yeah. boy it's does, because he's a bit older. Very strange time. It's, it's yeah. didn't anybody at all. Weirdly, we, we had sort mm. of sort of terrible uh, winds and rain here. And at one point, it blew all the fence panels down between us and our neighbours. Yeah. We, we love our neighbours to bits. And, and they've got a dog as well, as have we. <laughs> so what we decided to do was just leave the fence panels down. Yeah. For the whole of that time, they sat in their garden on one side. <laughs> we had our gin and tonic. We just sort of, it was all above board. But we sounds very loose. It. But it, it became really yeah. important, didn't it? To, you know, just to, be able to find see those to ways of interacting. Oh, yeah. 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 And then we, when, when we were told that we could suddenly, mm. you know, you're allowed to sit with three people outside. And it was yeah, like, I was like, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> straight away. <laughs> Sorry, we can only have three. You'll have to stay at home today. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. Crazy, yeah. crazy days. That seemed like a dream, doesn't it? For a, yeah. yeah, three years ago now, I suppose, wasn't it? Yeah. It was, doesn't seem real. 
just no, it really yeah. doesn't, does it? You know, we're, we're just back, back to there normal, you largely. Yeah. You know, um, so t- you you mentioned there that you did a, a stage show with Jody a while ago, mm. which, which um, uh, yeah. was lovely. And um, so, what what was it like working with her and, and Mandip and and John and you know the, the cast in general? I know you know there was some limitations. You know, you didn't get to socialise much, but yeah, but how was it on set? And I was brilliant. I mean, those guys. <laughs> Obviously, Mandip and Jody are such a like a well-oldered machine. They're, yeah. they're great pals. John to just fit in anywhere because he's so instantly likable and, and you know, and he's a pro as well. Um, and super humble, you know, very aware that he hadn't done a lot of acting and just wanted to get it right and just sort of do, and he smashed it, you know, in my yeah, yeah. Oh, he did. Sort of, yeah. He couldn't have played that part any differently or any better, in my opinion. But um, yeah, they're just a lot of fun. Again, you know when you're joining something where everyone's known each other that long, cast yeah. and crew and everything, and they know how everything works, and you're mm. stepping in in a massive costume with a massive, <laughs> costume, um, you know, not costume. exactly yeah. invisible, really, is it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just sort of slink back into the yeah. show. Say, but don't mind me. <laughs> that's it. They were super welcoming and yeah. super friendly, as you can imagine. That whole that whole place was just nothing but warmth, generosity. Yeah. And sort of top end professionalism. It was brilliant. You d- you really did feel like you were working with the creme de la creme in every department. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant, good. isn't it? So, yeah. have you got a sing? Uh, you know, a favourite memory from Ooh. from filming? One mo- moment that kind of always makes you smile. So, I mean, the, the, the skateboard one was definitely one of those. Days <laughs> I thought, what is life? Um, <laughs> but, do you know what? I think that my biggest takeaway from it, and I was asked this at the convention in LA, actually, they were sort of saying, you know, what's your, what's your best memory? Is just what I was talking about. It was how amazing everybody was at their mm. jobs. Not just how welcoming they made me feel, but how generous they were with their time and their expertise and how, you know, whether it was Ray and the costume department uh, or, I say, like Danny Marie and the prosthetics or anybody that had to deal with me or look after me, the, the, the firsts and seconds, ADs, Constantly checking in because I couldn't eat with the costume. Oh, really? Yeah. I lived on protein shakes and, and energy drinks just oh, to get me through the day. But there was always somebody there. Are you too hot? Are you okay? Do you need yeah. a stool to sit down on? Do you, you know, can can I get you a drink? Mm. I was so well looked after. That's brilliant. And also working with people who were geniuses of what they do. So yeah, my yeah. biggest takeaway from it is not really a particular scene or particular moment because I loved all of the film. Mm. It was it was how amazing everybody there is yeah we, we've heard that a lot about you know everyone yeah. involved um that's that's um quite interesting that you couldn't take the suit off you yeah. know like that I it, once really it was on it's on is it yeah <laughs> you know you hear about um you know superhero suits and like you know the spider men make sure there's a zip built in now so you know yeah, <laughs> they can go to the loo quickly and it yeah. doesn't take them you know four hours to get get the suit off and stuff you know exactly but, uh yeah i guess you know uh once you're in you're in and um dan starkey was telling us that when he has this you know sontar and stuff oh yes and it's, the same, mm. he's in, but yeah. over the course of the day, the glue starts to melt and he, his face starts <laughs> to slide down, yeah. you know? <laughs> there was a few times when I had to run on and just like yeah. stick a bit of my face because we filmed in, in summer as well. We tipped into yeah. the you know, into summer. Yeah, yeah. And that's when it got. Really so good. when you got out of the suit, was it just sort of a, a gush <laughs> of sweat coming out, you know? That, <laughs> it was pretty ming. And oh, all lovely. <laughs> in order to stick the whole prosthetics onto my face, there's like, they put like, um, like a big bald cap, really. This mm. sort of like a latex layer, but it goes all around my face, like a latex balaclava, really. Right. But they obviously cut little holes in yeah. here, so I can well, try and hear through the prosthetic. But the problem is, if they if the holes were a bit too high, it would just fill up with sweat. And I'm oh. sorry, <laughs> sorry, this is so horrible. So at the end, when they would sort of try and unpick it from the bottom, there would just be a little. <laughs> oh my goodness! I know. It's horrible. I'm, Sounds I'm sorry. disgusting. That <laughs> does. I'm, too much there. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling really ill. Yeah, <laughs> you must have lost some weight through doing that. Yeah, it's, it's a quite a good way to lose a little bit of weight, though. Yeah, so. the carbonista diet. I love yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just sweat it off. That's yeah. all yeah, you need. Well, that's it. Save the planet. Sweat. That's all you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a chap on Twitter called Didymus Holmes, and mm. uh, oh, he's uh, asked a few. Yeah, he's oh, a you know, massive yeah. fan, yeah, isn't he? Yeah. 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 Seems to mean a lot to him, which is great. Yeah, it, it does. His um, his kind of story behind why is is, is quite touching, really. Mm, yeah. Um, but yeah, he complimented about your you know the acting touches, you know the head tilts and sniffing things. And yeah, uh, it, he had a question. There's um, we kind of briefly talked a bit about um, you know kind of more Carvinista, but he wondered if you'd had any 
specific thoughts about what kind of adventures you'd like to see you know are there more lupari out there that weren't in the battalion or you know would you want to do new adventures or you know go back to the tardis years or all of it i am um, i think we touched on it before as well that there's either end that i think there's lots to be explored yeah. it would be great to do sort of like an origin story and see you know, I don't know, even from sort of young Carvanista becoming... Young a, Carvanista, the, yeah. The training that he has to go through to yeah. become what he does. That would be kind of cool, you know. Mm. Who would play the young Carvanista? I don't know. <laughs> last person to play Lassie. Some um, young pup. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, just cast, just low looking. Have they ever worked on camel before? We'll take them. Um, yeah, that kind of story, I think, would be really cool. Yeah. Also, obviously, it is mentioned in, that, in, that, in the... Is it the last episode? Well, I think maybe the last episode I do, when they say... You know, there's no one left mm. of your species, and wipe them all out. Yeah, of course. Such a yeah. powerful sort of mm. a oh. dark moment. That bit when you do that howl. Oh yeah, uh, uh, and, the, and the camera pulls back. Yeah. And stuff. Oh god, it's it's awful that bit. Yeah. You know, like... when we did the read through, I remember getting chugged up at that bit. Yeah, yeah. That's such a such a powerful moment. You know, that sort of real visceral outpouring. Yeah. Yeah. That point, apart from the sniffs and the you know the odd little comedy head turn, there's you know there's he's he's, he's spoken as a human. Mm. Apart from a few growls, so there is that kind of suddenly that outpouring of emotion was really, yeah, it was really, I really enjoyed doing that. But yeah, he, he's the last of his tribe, so that's yeah. that's it. So that's quite exciting in terms of if it is just going to be him, Bell, and Vinda moving forward. Where will they go? What will they do? Yeah, he's the last of his kind, or maybe out there somewhere. There's another colony yeah. somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Is there another isolated Lupari community or something? Yeah. Exactly. Someone got into a pod and escaped. You just, mm. yeah, you know. Yes, there's got to be, you know, it's Doctor Who, anything could be done. You know? yeah, that'd be quite yeah. exciting, him meeting another Lupari. Can you imagine? Definitely. Yeah. And, and, and uh, if they were t- total opposites as well. Yeah, you yeah. Know, a bit like him and yeah. Dan, you know, that would be that would be great fun. Yeah. But that, that howl moment there, like, the, the fact that it was so affecting for people is, I think, you know, t- testament to you know your work you know the the writing of the character and, yeah you know, it's the humanity you, coming yeah, through it isn't and, it and you know even though he, he looks like war bungle <laughs> you, you feel oh, and for okay. the character and you know, <coughs> and and like him so much and that you know do you know what i mean it's, it's yeah well that's it's, obviously i think as we touched on before something that you really want you even mm-hmm. though he's northern he's northern you and, and he can be a bit you know curmudgeonly he you want people to warm to him yeah and i think that's the geniuses of Chris uh, of Chris's writing, really. You know, he's so good at writing, mm. sort of twisting the scene round on its head. You're making yeah. it one thing, and then you think something else. There's, there's, and those scripts were so intricate. I said yeah. to you recently, I said you know, I would read those scripts and think to myself, how has all of this come out of your head? <laughs> it's unreal. Yeah, yeah. And I know Doctor Who through the ages has always been a bit like that, but there was something about this season that I just thought. How are you going to stitch all these stories yeah. together? Make them all work. Yeah. Make it all make sense. I know. Then, yeah. He, he what, did. Yeah. It was uh, incredible, he, wasn't it? When, when we spoke to him and he, he was telling us about the, 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 the genesis of, of Flux and how it started. And, you know, he's, he's setting out saying, well, you know, I needed a re- as many repeating sets as possible, you know, sets of, yeah. you know, small character moments, all of this stuff. And as, as many stuff that we can, we, we can reuse and a really simple story. Yeah, but the simplicity of the story doesn't underlie. It's com- you know, it's it's a complex story. It's got lots of complex interactions mm. and weaving. So, so it's, 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 it's incredible it's leaping through different you know time yeah. space. It was just so so complicated. Yeah. <laughs> just and yet you follow it. You know, it's, yeah. it's yeah. laid out in a way that I don't think anybody really had. I mean, there are maybe a few moments where you got to look at it again, perhaps, and get something from it. But yeah. on the whole, it's really easy to follow wasn't it which i think yeah. is, is cracking no, he's a fantastic just writer an mm. incredible work on it yeah yeah, he's amazing. yeah you know just to go back to when you were yeah. saying before about any favorite moments or any takeaway moments along with how brilliant everybody was yeah i remember when i walked onto the set the first day and, re- and realized that you know i had had my own spaceship oh <laughs> yes was that good and then they're like this, so this is this is carvanese the spaceship and yeah you're like, this is my pad. <laughs> I, I hope somewhere there's lots of selfies of you in costume, you know, at the control deck. And, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. For Insta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But as well, because yeah, so all the props and everything else are all yours, aren't they? So you, you know, had a, you had a, yeah. a lot of weapons to kind yeah. of mess around with and, and play well, about. Those, right? Yeah, and those I didn't realise until day one. In fact, the, the very first scene, yeah. that I saw, the very first time I met John, the very first day I was on set, was the first time that I realised about the massive hat. <laughs> the, 
ostensibly wears <laughs> massive mittens. Yeah. And then they handed me an axe and they were like, and this is how you operate it. And I was like, really? I was like, Seriously? <laughs> massive dog mittens on. I can't. Yeah. So trying to work all that out was pretty complicated. And also yeah. the very first time we did the first scene and they said, you know, okay, you're just going to, you're going to hit the door with the axe and then you're going to walk through and you're going to go, I'm Carvin East. You're going to do that. And I sort of did it. Down on it went. The door fell, and I walked in and clipped my hat on the top of the door. <laughs> it just fell off. It was like cut. Oh, <laughs> blue for real. <laughs> yeah, he, he needed an extra high door frame to <laughs> get you in. Yeah, look to get in, but that's not very uh, warlordy, is it? No, <laughs> I suppose not. No, no. <laughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. So, were you a, a Who fan before you got the the part in the in the show? I was, I mean, obviously it's always been part of my world. Mm-hmm. You know, it's been around ever since I was a kid, but that's, my my era was sort of the Sylvester McCoy era. So I remember yeah. that. And then, you know, by the time I was doing, I don't know, probably A-levels and then going to university, it sort of, it was all, yeah, it was, finished yeah, with it. sort of, yeah, discovered other other things. Karaoke, wine, women and song. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? so, so yeah, but then when it came, when it came back, obviously Chris's yeah. era, and then David's and it started to ramp up again. You sort of catch the odd episode, but mm. I never, I never followed it religiously. Yeah, yeah. yeah but but yeah, you were yeah. uh, aware of it, and uh, oh, yeah, think, always, always. You know, I, I don't think it's uh, a requisite to know the show no, inside no, out to, to no. be in it. You know, which is sometimes no. you see see that online that people think that and stuff. Like that. <laughs> well, that's that, that's down to them, but yeah, yeah. I don't, I, I don't think so necessarily. I mean, certainly doing um, Calvin Easter, which is bringing mm. a new character to the to the team. I think it's it's quite nice to have a a fresh outlook. So it's mm, yeah, yeah. obviously it was different with the Sea Devil because then you're sort of paying homage to an existing character, yeah, something that's yeah. already there. Yeah. And even though it's being contemporised, and you, you know you want to mm. make sure that you're respecting it properly as well. So you want to you know you want to do your research, you want to go back and do all yeah. that. Which is we had big discussions about that because that was important to to look back. Yeah, how, how was doing that? We were that, that leads nicely into my next. It question, does, but really. it stops yeah. me asking my question, oh, which I have to say I'll first before we do go, that, because I've been waiting for this one. Right? See how polite <laughs> I am. I'm not interrupting him anymore, Craig. I've, I've started <laughs> to do that, but I don't do that anymore. But I have to say, you know, I mean, you know, just talking about um, not necessarily being a Doctor Who fan and, and you know that sort of stuff. But what kind of strikes me from talking to you now is 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 how invested you 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 are in the character of Carvin East. You know, you're you're yeah. you're looking at other other stories that can be told. You're looking at the backstory. Mm. You know all of that stuff. It's uh, so so. There must be something there that's kind of triggered your excitement. Oh, definitely. It's definitely reignited my interest in in that in that world. You know, in the mm. universe. And like I say, going and doing the conventions and talking to the fans, it's hard. It's infectious. It's hard not to get swept up in that. And of course, without naming any names, you can watch all of the yeah. old Who's now on certain streaming services. Indeed, so you, mm. you can go back and you can, I can do. I can go back and watch all of those now. Yeah. And I'm looking really looking forward to what's coming next because obviously. Yeah huge changes in the way that it's going to be brought to life and mm. that's really exciting so yeah can't wait to see that yeah so, you're, you're right yeah. It's, it's lovely to uh you know to hear you with so much enthusiasm about it all and the character and, and that kind of desire to you know to to do more with it as yeah. well I, I oh, it's, you know, it's brilliant i jump at the chance to do more with the character i mean or even you know the nice thing about playing carvin yeah. sea devil is you never see me no that's it so you could come back as... well that, you know, mm. my secret hope is that yeah. I can still get the call one day and they better just yeah. play this character. I guess yeah. if they keep covering me up, I can just... Well, you just yeah, yeah, ad infinitum. Yeah, you, yeah. you, <laughs> you, you know what? Even if you appeared, uh, you know, sans makeup in it, mm. you could still come back, you know, as the Doctor at some point. It's happened yeah. a couple of times. And Karen know. Gillan, you know. That's Colin dream. Baker. Yeah. Peter Pacabal. Colin, Peter. Do you remember the little... Um, the introduction to John's character we did, which was sort of like yes, a, I was going to say you oh, were yeah, his mate, yeah, weren't you? Little, yes. So, yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 I mean, either that, whether there could be more twists there, or maybe, or yeah. maybe people just forgot that and were like, who's he? You know. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember there was uh, there was theories flying around about that when that little scene came out. Do you remember Paul? Who, Lots who of speculation mate? online. Yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. Is who's this guy? It's going to turn out to be yeah. Davros. Yeah. No, it was cool. And there were nice little touches that Ray had put in. Yeah. The, with the jet, with the shirt that the, the character wore in that little uh, clip, was the same colours as Carvanista's costume. If you if you look at it, oh, oh, so, yeah. To look at it Obviously, again, everything yeah. that I'm talking about with the yeah. mess on the horoscope all links to something that's coming up in the future. You know, oh, I'll, I'll have to go back and have another look at it. Now. Yeah, it was, it was, it was really nice. It's all layered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Another, another another crisp brainwave, obviously. Yeah, 
Brilliant. So uh, I'd like to go back to your early days a little bit now, if we may. Oh, wibbly wobbly. <laughs> um, when I was five. <laughs> <laughs> so what what led to your love of acting and, and what, what kind of got you into it? I, you know, it's a good question. I, I, my sort of, I didn't do any acting at school because the school I was at didn't offer sort of drama GCSE or drama A level. But I guess you could say I was sort of one of the class clowns. Right. <laughs> enjoy enjoy the sort of yeah. making people giggle, and um, but mainly it was it was Sunday afternoons spent at my nan's house. We would always go around, and me and my mum and my nan we would play cards in the front room while my granddad yeah. was the snooker, and I would do impressions or silly voices or basically anything to make my mum and my nan yeah, laugh. Yeah. And that's the earliest sort of recollection I have of seeing that seeing a response from another human because of something you've done making them laugh, making them, you know, whatever, and going, oh, I like that. You know, I, I like I like that, yeah. being able to do that. Yeah. And then, yeah, got went to university, did drama and English as a sort of combined degree at first. I switched to single honours drama eventually. Mm. And um, and that was it. That's when it all really kicked off. And then I was just doing every extracurricular thing I could possibly do. Acted in third-year productions when I was in the yeah. first year and trying to do as anyone had a director's project, I'd go and do it. Anyone was filming anything, I'd try and do it and just try and work and work and work as much as possible. But yeah, I had the bug from very early on, mm. watching a lot of movies, watching a lot of TV shows and just sort of thinking, I want to do that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the power of story and the power <laughs> of moving people. Yeah, yeah. Sort of, yeah. yeah. What, what were your sort of favourite movies then as a, as a kid sort of growing up? What, what kind of inspired you? I mean, I grew up in a great era for movies, you know, yeah. sort of the Goonies, Ghostbusters, Indiana Jones, yeah. Back to the Future era. So that was, you know, just getting hit with all that was was amazing. Mm. And then I think when I got a bit older and thought I was a bit cooler, I, I would sort of watch all the Pacino and De Niro movies, you know, the sort of the gangster flicks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then go back and revisit all the old classics, the Casablancas, the, you know, anything with James Cagney. And oh, all, yeah. yeah. And sort of watch that and just get that real, mm. you know, there was, there's, yeah, just watch whatever I could. There's all yeah. kinds of things there, really, aren't there? You know, yeah, some, yeah, some yeah, fancy yeah. Stuff, some old school kind of, yeah, Casablanca's a, a, yeah, a great film. Yeah. All those old films, you know, you forget sometimes and then you just sit one Sunday afternoon and one comes on and you just Yeah, yeah, yeah. God. And, you know, it's always interesting picking out actors who are ahead of their time as well, like Spencer yeah. Tracy's or, again, you Jimmy Cagney's or... Yeah, yeah, there's always yeah. those people that you sort of go, wow, you were doing something then that, you know, that would stand now. There's yeah. a lot of those old films you think, oh, you can't do that anymore. You know, it's all a bit yes. Florida. Oh, a bit you can, though. Bit. Yeah, maybe some dialogue changes, but the actual yeah. story is... Mm. The mm. story is... And certainly certain actors, you just think, you know... Mm. I mean, Brando's a classic example, but you do watch and you think, oh, no, you were, you were really ahead of your time. Charles mm. Norton, the old British actor, he was amazing. Yeah. Alec Guinness, you know, a lot of amazing production. And just watch those again and again and yeah. again, and try and emulate and copy it. I think it was Michael Caine who said, steal from the best. In his yeah, that's yeah. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Steal from the best. And you sort of do as an actor, you pinch the bits that you like when you watch other people do what they do and you try and add that to your palette. Yeah, yeah. Way, you know? yeah. It seems like doing voices and stuff is quite a big part of what you do. Is that something that you really enjoy and you know that you like it. working on? I love it. I really love it. I, there are some actors um, who do their own voice for their entire mm. careers. And that's brilliant, you know, and that's testament to them. But I, I don't know why. I, I was just knew I was never going to be that type of actor. I was always going to be a, a character actor, I mm, guess. Mm. And I don't. I think if I hadn't been able to do voices, yeah, I, I don't think I would have had the career that I had. In fact, until really? this year, yeah. I'd only done my own accent about three times in my entire. Oh, really? Career. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. And then this year, weirdly, sort of three projects on the bounce have all been sort of. Scouse, and you're sort of like, oh, well, <laughs> just be, just be, just be again. yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But, um, yeah I, I love doing voices, and it's always been a big part of of the of the work that I do. Mm. Like anything, I think we talk about the costume earlier on, and yeah. you go once that costume is on, it's this. Once you know, if you've got the right, a lot of actors say it starts with the shoes, darling. Once I've got the right shoes, <laughs> but there's a lot, there's something in that. There is there's sort of yeah. there are walks, there are physical things that you can do. There's obviously costume that can help you out a lot. And the voice for me is another one. If you find a certain mm. voice, it can unlock so much. It can literally yeah. change the way that lines are read and and you know the way things are inferred. But yeah, personally, I, I think it's a it's a it's a great tool to have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so what what was your first sort of major break then that, that was on stage or screen or you know what what was the the thing that you were like oh yeah okay this could be m what my job I don't have to get a proper job you know a normal job. 
Um, I, th- I think when when did it? We always call me and my wife call them side hustles. You know, you're every <laughs> side hustle, you, you, and, and you sort of have to be. You have to be really industrious yeah. from the get go. As soon as you leave drama school, um, and I've done a myriad of different jobs. Obviously, the classic waiting tables, working behind the bar. Yeah, yeah. worked for a marquee company, just putting up massive marquees years ago. Um, but luckily, unfortunately, I would say for the, at least for the last. 14 years, 15 mm. years, I, I, I've not had to rely on side hustles that much at all, which yeah, is cool. yeah, yeah. Which is always the thing that you dream of, is just being able yeah. to do what you love, and get paid for it, and be able to pay the bills. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's what you want. Yeah, that's, <laughs> it's that's, not too much to ask for, is no, it? No, really? and it's that's gone. kind of the, the way I view it, you know, with, with filming work. But, you know, it, whatever level things get to, yeah. I get to do something I love, you know, make something that goes on telly or just goes on youtube or whatever that's yeah, great exactly. not everyone gets to do mm. you know something they love you know and i yeah. think it's it's so important and it's quite uh, often when you meet people they say things oh so you're an actor are you you're right an oh, actor. so you want to be famous and you, so you, go, you go no i've never never mm. wanted to be famous yeah. i never wanted limelight or, or that kind of you know to be a celebrity at all i think there's this difference now Actors wanted to be actors back in the day, and if you got mm. if you got fame and you became a household name, that was part of it. Whereas now, I think people are almost they want to be a celebrity. They, they want to, yeah, uh, yeah, over and above actually the, the actual acting yeah. work or whatever you know, exactly. it, it might be. Yeah. Whereas all I ever wanted to do is is exactly what you're saying is to be able to do what I love and do it well enough to mm. to make my living from it. That was it, you know. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. yeah. Which so yeah, it, I'd say for about the last so between ten and fifteen years, that's been. That's been what I've been able to do. So I'm, you know, I'm definitely one of the lucky ones. Yeah, well, you've been in awesome. quite a quite a fair bit of stuff, haven't you? Yeah, I'm looking you... here actually on your IMDb, and you've, you've done a done a bit of Corey as well. Mm. A bit of Corey, yeah, which was my nan's favourite show. God rest her soul. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, and it was the last thing she ever saw yeah. me do. Um, oh, was it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, she passed away to the beginning of 2020, um, and this was the Christmas. I did six months in 2019, so that yeah. last six months leading up to the Christmas special was when my character was in it. And I never told my nan what was going to happen. or what. Oh. Was so when the Christmas special yeah. came, I don't know if you guys watched Corrie at all, but it was the year where yeah. my character walked into the Rovers right. with a shotgun, basically. Yeah, I saw, I saw the pictures of you on, yeah. online with yeah. it. Yeah, and apparently it had never been done before, and it was quite a big thing because they, you know, the storylines are always really meticulously mm. thought out for Christmas mm. specials with what they should and shouldn't have. And, you know, it ended up with me, the Helter Skelter, and I fell off the Helter Skelter and t- to my demise, you know. <laughs> just watching my nan's face on Christmas Day, she just turned to me and go, oh. <laughs> every few minutes. Like, oh. yeah. Yeah. It was, I'll never forget that. And, yeah, the fates just aligned that yeah. I finally got, finally got to be in her favourite programme. Oh, yeah, that's lovely. Oh, that's really special. Yeah. Did, did you not tell her at all? Did, did she not know until she saw you in the programme? I, no, I, she knew I was doing it because oh, luckily, yeah. because I lived down south, I was able to stay with her while I was filming as well. So it was, ah, right. So right. Both yeah. worlds. I could live with my nan, spend some good time oh, with brilliant. her, and go and film as well, which was, which was really special. But no, in terms of the story and the plot lines and what was happening, I didn't tell her a thing. So, so she yeah. didn't know anything Every about time that. we watched it, she, was, yeah. she couldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Because uh, so, that's um, another show that's dear to people's hearts, isn't yeah. it? And it's got a massive fan base yeah. again. And, and that's why it's been running so long. Yeah, for sure. And weirdly, it's the, it's the mm. one, which I don't know why I didn't anticipate, because I thought, well, I'm, I'm only going to be in it for five minutes. But <laughs> really, that is the one that people will still now. In fact, it happened to me the other day. I was coming back from, from right. Budapest. I was at yeah. the airport. I'd just come through security. I was putting my belt back on and, you know, putting everything back <laughs> in the pocket. And there was there was like a young lad who looked at me and went, "Excuse me, were you were you Derek in Coronation Street?" I was like, Bloody hell, yeah, where? So we're going back. Then. That's amazing. He was like, "Oh yeah, no, I thought so." You know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you, fantastic. Yeah, again, same fans pop up everywhere in all different ages and backgrounds, don't they? Yeah, and that's I guess another difference between TV and theatre. When you do theatre, mm. it's to you know a finite amount of people, but you mm. forget. This might sound stupid, but when you do the TV, particularly something like Corrie and yeah, Doctor Who, yeah. you go into it, millions of people's living rooms. And, and it lives on as well. Yeah, yeah so it's, definitely. It's not just that, you know, of the moment mm. thing, you know. I suppose. Um, so I'd like to ask you, uh, what's it like <clears> being <throat> the best long-running male West End show performer? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, it was it was fantastic. It was, yeah, it was, um, it was a role that I, I took over. Um, yeah as Miss Trunchbull, and yeah. again, just one of those roles that is so much fun to play. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, when did you take it on? 
I started in 2014, September 2014. And then yeah. I had three years in town. I did three years in the West End. Right. And um, and then I did the first part of the, the tour for them as well because I was really mm. excited about suddenly being able to take that show to places where, you know, people people who've got three kids can't get from yeah. Dublin or Scotland. Yeah, right down to. And get mm. down to London and stay there and feed themselves <laughs> and watch your show. Yeah, and, you know, the theatre's expensive, isn't it? You know, uh, we look to take my kids to mm. the Lion King. Uh-huh. Uh, so we got three kids, and it was going to cost almost 600 quid for us to do it. <gasps> and then we looked at it, and we're like, oh, actually, we could get cheaper tickets. They're like 50 mm. or something. But they're right at the top, at the very back row. The yeah, kids aren't going to see anything. Yeah. And so doing the, you know, the regional tours and stuff yeah. is, a, good is a way for people mm. to be able to do it when, you know, like you said, you've got to get to London, probably stay over. It's, it, it really adds up. It's, and, a lot. You know, it's, it's always a great experience, mm. but yeah, it's just, it's a lot sometimes. It is a lot. It. And that was important to, to me, um, not in a self-righteous way, but you know, <laughs> knowing the impact that that mm. show had, had when I was doing it in town, yeah, I suddenly thought, oh my, you know, being able to rock up in town with this show and be that show that's there for a few weeks just be fantastic. So yes, we did the yeah. first the first bit of the tour. It's funny. My wife last year did, um, you know, the Mother Goose with Ian McKellen and, and John Bishop. Mm, yeah. Okay, yeah. She suddenly she got to work with John Bishop as well. Didn't yeah, <laughs> and, um, and that was Ian McKellen's thing as well. That he they yeah. did a couple of they did about eight weeks at the Duke of York, I think, in London, and then it, on Ian say so. They he said, "I'm only going to do it if we can then tour it for a while." So they did. They went everywhere. Yeah, that was an idea. Yeah, 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 all over the country. But it's great, you know, and, and, oh, and fantastic. exactly how yeah. it should be. I think. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's, it's disappointing for people when you know a show comes out. So, like the time fracture, the Doctor Who one, you know, it was only in London. You know, it's, yeah. it's immediately out of reach for some people, and you yeah. know, yeah. it's just it's just how it has to be sometimes, you know. I guess, but you know, if something can tour. You know, it just opens up that audience. It's fantastic. You know? It does, especially when something's got a huge following, like like mm. Doctor Who. So, yeah. when I was in. LA at the start of the year for a Gallifrey one. I mean, people have travelled there from all over yeah, the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's huge, isn't it? It's huge. Yeah, I, I don't think I. I think I underestimated quite how huge it was going to be. I mean, it was massive. Mm. There was so much cosplay going on as well, and, and yeah. it was. I mean, it was a real joy to be there, but I hadn't anticipated just how <laughs> huge it was going to be. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I think. Really I think um, the last one was was their biggest yet, wasn't it? I think it, it was, was. I think. Yeah. yeah. So uh, jo- Jody was at that. That one, wasn't was, she? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Chris, Chris as well, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah, Chris. No, he did the year before, I think. Right. Oh, right. He, he'd been prior to that. Yeah, he wasn't there when I was there. It was me and I'm trying to think who else was there. I think Bonnie was there. Um, all the old, all the old regulars. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hines was there. John Culshaw was there. I'm trying to think. Patrick O'Kane. I sort of spent quite a bit of time. With Patrick O'Kane. You know who played? I forget. Was it? Oh, oh, Ashad. Ashad, yes. The, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's a terrific actor. I've, yeah. I was really psyched to meet him, actually, because I'd seen him on stage quite a few times when I was when I was younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and he's just, I always thought he was amazing. And yeah. So, yeah, it was cool just to suddenly get to, you know, hang out in L.A., as you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pinching yourself going, what is yeah. it? <laughs> My life, yeah. yeah. Fancy <laughs> seeing you here, old boy. How's it going? <laughs> well, one must with the rounds, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, you, you have done quite a bit of theatre over the years, haven't you? Do you, you yeah. You, it, is it co- quite nice in you know the career terms to kind of switch between them and not mm-hmm. just be kind of stuck to the one, you know, the one, one genre type of thing? It's, it's or, lovely. Or, genre, the medium, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I know what you mean. It, it's again, I have to say that I'm, I'm one of the one of the lucky mm. ones. There's there's lots of people in our industry that can be pigeonholed quite quickly, you know, particularly if you do musical theater, you know, people st- over here, unlike America, and yeah. basically so over here, it's sort of be like, oh, that's what you do. You know? yeah, yeah, and you're pigeonholed. Yeah, straight away. Mm. Or, you know, and vice versa, I guess, you know, if you do TV, you might take you a while before someone gives you an opportunity to do something else. Mm. Unless you become a household name, then you can do anything. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I do, again, feel very, yeah. very fortunate that I've been able to do theater, musical mm. theater, radio, TV, film it, it, it's, yeah, it's fantastic yeah, yeah. i feel very 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 lucky the wild lot i'm trying to i'm trying to think now because i because i went to see um with, with the kids um we went to see matilda a few years back oh yeah so I'm trying to think would that have been you in it because it might have been actually because it would have it been between 2014 and 2017 in london september yeah 2017. yeah i think we went 2016 
Yeah, yeah, I wish I'd have to, I'd have to sort of check. But do you know what? Honestly, I, I would recommend it to anybody. I mean, it's one of those stories that, is, especially with the film out now, I think yeah. a lot of people really, really know it. But I have to admit, at the end of it, I was, I was literally crying my eyes out, yeah. which is terrible. You know, and I thought, I said to you, Jeff, I'm, not, I'm, I'm an emotional stonewall. You don't get any emotion yeah, yeah. out of me oh, apart from Hyper. That's yeah. it. But, but we watched Matilda, and honestly, I was bluffing like <laughs> I really was. It just it's gets you, doesn't it? Brilliant performance. Yeah, yeah. Tim, Tim's music is really clever. I think you've got really exciting numbers mm. that kids can get hyped up by, and, it, and you've got those yeah. really poignant numbers for adults. You know, when I grow mm. up, all about childhood, and, and yeah. also the fact that you're, you know, the eponymous hero that is, it's tiny. Yeah, mm. that's it. And, yeah. the, and those kids, oh my god, oh, they're fantastic. They are oh. unbelievable, and they work yeah. so hard. Yeah. And they, they are just a joy to be around. They really are. That the time on that show was a really yeah. special time for me. We had, but you know, we had one Matilda, who was eight years old. Yeah, she was. She was eight when she when she started That's the show. Incredible. Yeah, it's so much when you listen to what they say, what they sing, yeah. what they have to oh, do. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, the yeah. is that beautiful moment at the end where the rest of the company on their scooters, as you know, sort of like just lowers their head. Yeah, she walks down and takes her bow, and the place erupts, and you just I get choked up people thinking about yeah. it. I, I, I'm thinking the same now. <laughs> It's such a beautiful moment, and you just think, it is, oh, yeah. and you deserve this so mm. much. So, yeah, those, those, yeah, those are really, really beautiful. It is, I think, yeah, yeah. There's a, lo- a lot of talent going into those, and yeah. a- again, talking about the immediacy of being in the audience, you're, you're part of that whole yeah. thing. You, you kind of feel so connected to everybody who's on stage. Yeah, you know, it's it's something I, I I hope we never never lose theatre, and you know, because oh, it's you know, so, it such be... an important part of the culture. Yeah, same. I think, and and the two you know mediums as you know they're mm. so different you yeah. uh, as we touched on before the live thing about theater is is, is super special you know it's, yeah. it's really, yeah, yeah yeah you sort of can't replace that um but the joy of being you know, of working on a production like doctor mm. who and getting to be part of something like that has its own sort of amazing qualities you know yeah. it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a very different way of performing but it's a it's an equally as thrilling way of performing. Yeah, well, you're you're part of the Hooniverse now, Craig. Yes. That's it, yeah. forevermore. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Look at me. <laughs> look at me. Yeah. Weren't those um, first trips back to the cinema or gig or something after COVID like proper magic? Oh yeah. You know, I remember yeah. going yeah. sitting three seats away from every other person, yeah. with a mask on, and yeah. yeah, but just the fact that the ball started to roll, yeah, yeah, yeah. sort of. But like you Getting say, now where we are, you sort of think, well, it seems like no time at all. Yeah, mm. exactly. Yeah, it, yeah. it uh, feels like. But then, a dream, it, um, it? but then it felt kind of weird when cinemas were back to normal and the distance restrictions had gone. You out to sit next to a complete stranger yeah. without yeah. a mask. That I kind know. of felt a bit weird. To start yeah. off with, it did feel a bit weird. I remember also thinking um, and saying things like, "Well, I'll always mm. wear a mask now. Whenever, yeah, yeah. whenever I go on the train, there's just no point taking the chance. I'll always wear a mask." Mm. Of course, five minutes later. Nobody wears yeah. it. Yeah, that's I, it. I don't remember the last time I wore one. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. No, that's it. So, shall we play our game? Or have you got something? Uh, we've, I've got a couple. Oh yes, go for more it. More quick questions, and then we have a special game. Very special we, game. Uh, if you're good for time, Craig, you'll, you'll play. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, I wondered uh, what's next for you. I wondered if it was maybe something with Mr. Chibnall, because uh, I gather Ooh. you guys were together recently. Which... How do you know we were together recently? Because um, <laughs> that, that, that's how we got in touch with you about this. Oh, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> yeah, well, Chris is he's big fans of yours, actually. He was sort of, um, yeah, he was singing your praises and saying, oh, I think oh, you awesome. really do oh, this. Because um, I've not done one of these before. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, we, we're your first podcast. Yeah, yeah. Whoa! Oh, it's, it's perfect. <laughs> this is great. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, he's big fans of yours. And we did, yeah. we, Chris is, I mean, I hope he wouldn't mind me saying so, but we, we sort of, we become mates, which you know, because yeah, yeah. you did Law and Order that when he was on that, didn't you? So, so Law and Order UK, yes, I mean, yeah, yes. M- many yeah. moons ago, yeah. But weirdly, because mm. of COVID restrictions, because of where he lives, and, and obviously he was writing, and, and, and yeah, yeah. Him, so it script, wasn't. We didn't meet for the whole time mm. that I was filming. Oh, really? And we first met in the uh, in the customs line in LA. Oh, really. <laughs> We're well, going to Gallifrey. Yeah, we just done like the, the ten hour flight, or whatever. We got yeah. off, sort of feeling a bit groggy, and this voice just went, "Craig." I was like, "Yes, I so did." So, <laughs> well, I, I have to say, he is one of the nicest human beings I've ever Absolutely. met. Absolutely, yeah. in yeah. my life, he's he's so humble. Mm. You know, for the amount of genius, he is so humble, and just just a lot of fun to be around. So we yeah, yeah. We saw each other recently because we went to the the football together. 
I always oh. had it. <laughs> yeah, we went to the football and um, and we just sat chatting, chat, 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 yeah. chat. And not about work, really. We obviously we Stuff. talked a bit about Doctor Who and Carbon mm-hmm. and, and that, but we we just chat you know about life stuff and it's really nice yeah, he's yeah. such a lovely lovely human i'm so glad that our paths have crossed yeah yeah, yeah it, we we were so thrilled to uh, uh spend some time with him for the podcast oh, definitely and, like, yeah, you know yeah. he was just he was brilliant with us and you know yeah. everyone that we speak to has great stories about him mm. and how kind and he he's is. so kind well, one yeah. of the things that just popped into my mind is when we did gallifrey one yeah. obviously everybody was super excited to meet chris because mm. he's chris Jibber. And he had this wonderful way of introducing anybody else he was with, whether it was Jamie, because Jamie Magnus Stone was there as well, or yeah. whether it was me or any other cast member. And he would, he'd just sing their praises. Yeah. You know, we did these live panels or live watch alongs with some episodes. You know, we do like a, an audio commentary. And any time a bit <laughs> came up that he thought that Jamie yeah. had directed brilliantly, he would just sing Jamie's praises. He said really lovely things about me. He's so generous when mm. it comes to other people that it's, um, and it's, it's it's kind of rare, you know, to have someone yeah. so humble and, and yeah. just generous in that way. But yeah, he is he, he's he's joy. He's joy yeah. on legs, is Chris Chibnall. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a good a epitaph, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I'll take it. I'll take it. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'll take it your teams, uh, your football team's Liverpool then, is it? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. and not the other lot, yeah. yeah that, that's, that's why uh, Dan lived near uh, Liverpool Stadium, wasn't it? Yeah. That's, that's it, the, yeah. yeah. So you've got me and, and Chris and John, obviously, is all big, big reds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah brilliant. Um, I've just got one quick question here from Didymus Holmes again. Yeah. Uh, he'd like to know what would be your dream stage role. Oh, dream stage role. Well, I have to say, Trunchbull comes pretty close yeah, it's pretty good isn't it um, <laughs> in terms of yeah in terms of shows that that's a hard one to beat however lovely segue into what i'm about to do next which Ooh. is a show called just for one day at the old vic and it is the story of live aid oh, oh wow really yeah and how how it happened yeah. how it happened and you know it includes that amazing back catalog of songs that you know we all we all know i'm sorry i'm saying that i'm assuming we're all yeah, well, I'm a I'm a big yeah, YouTube I, fan, so I I know the the show. Yeah, I I, yeah. I remember Live Aid. I was mm-hmm. I was there. I was, yeah, I remember watching it on TV. I wasn't there at Wembley, sadly, I, yeah. but it was TV. It was a really special day. It was, it was huge, wasn't it? It was this mm. massive. And it's, again, I sort of can't believe it's not been done before, but it's it's happened. Being written by the amazing John O'Farrell, and is going to be directed by the equally amazing Luke Shepard at the Old Vic, where I've always yeah. wanted to work. Yeah. And yeah, I'm, I'm lucky enough. I'm going to be playing. Bob, Bob Geldof. You're doing Bob wow. Geldof. Yeah. Give us your fucking money. Do you, exactly. do, you do the line? <laughs> yeah, so, so there's all different bits that people recognize, plus lots yeah. of stuff that, that, you know, even I didn't know. So it's, it, mm. yeah, and it's good. It's got real, it's got real heart to it. And it's got killer tunes with amazing, amazing orchestrations by Matt Brind, who's our, our, the uh, sort of MD and musical supervisor on it. Yeah. But, you know, and I get to play Bob. So again, back to the voices thing and the sort of inhabitant yeah, marriage yeah. of becoming somebody else yeah. right up my street. So to answer Didymus's question, um, yeah, another, another sort of dream role has has, has come along. So Fantastic. Yeah, I can't wait. So w- when does that start? I was going to ask, yeah. We start rehearsals in December and we open on the 26th of January, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's quite yeah. soon. Well, yeah. we'll look, look, look out where, for Whereabouts did you say it was? On that. It's at the Old Vic Theatre. The is Old Vic. Just, just near Waterloo, yeah. Waterloo, yeah, yeah. 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 So we'll, we'll, maybe we'll see if we can come up and check it out. Oh, yeah. Definitely, to yeah. London. Let me know if you do. If, you, if you're heading that way and you want to come watch it, let me know. Okay, yeah, lovely. Yeah, we'll see if we can see it out. Yeah. It's got, so it's got all the tunes from, from Live Aid then? You do manage to yeah. get the well, rights yeah. to, to do those, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's sort of, maybe there was a few that they couldn't get, but most mm. of it yeah, that they've got, and they're sort of woven. It's not just like a jukebox musical with Andy yeah, yeah, yeah. and Elton John. Mm. There's sort of, it's... The story, yeah. John's written this beautiful way of, of, of mm. bringing the, the songs into the right relevant parts of the story and giving those real sort of power moments you know oh, power moments. yeah yeah, yeah I think that would be, be really good it'd be really really cool yeah how long does it run for to the end of march in at the old vic and then we've got fingers crossed for a, a west end transfer so yeah. excellent brilliant well, yeah. that's very exciting oh, good congratulations and, yeah. and best of luck with that best wishes yeah. for it i hope it thank uh, you guys. really thank does you. what it's what, what, you, what you need it to fantastic i'll be there for sure i i, yeah. I love that yeah, I'll, that out. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll hand over to you paul for the little game oh 
We can do our little game. Fantastic. Oh, oh, okay, don't, so don't be scared. <laughs> don't be scared. We, we 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 do ask all our very special VIP guests to participate in this, and it's just a it's a very simple game. We're not asking you to do much. We just have to make a few choices, Craig. Okay. That's all it is. Okay. <laughs> so here's the context. So do you recall? I don't know how familiar you are with Doctor Who Flux. I gather you were somehow involved in it, or, or something yes, like that. <laughs> a little bit. But at the end of it, do you recall, sir, that? Uh, the Grand Serpent, the evil antagonist who was manipulating things in the background to ensure the Centaurans were able to do their dastardly schemes yeah. to its fullest. Um, he was discovered by the Doctor and was actually banished to an asteroid for all eternity, uh, there to contemplate the infinite blackness of never-ending space. And the doctor shut the door on him afterwards, leaving him to it. So um, yeah. we are going to do the same thing to you. Um, however, we're not as cruel as the doctor was in there. We, we are going to let you take with you onto your asteroid, Craig, some uh, some certain things to keep you entertained, amused, and um, not bored, basically, as you yeah. look at the stars and wonder, how did this happen? How did <laughs> I get here? And all that kind of stuff. So you up for this? Yes, let's go for it. Fantastic. Oh, good. Okay, good. right. One so we're going gonna... to say no, and then we're going to have no answer. <laughs> yeah, we're going to. Uh, oh, okay. Well, uh, <laughs> thanks for coming to the show then. See you later. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So here's the first one. Cool. Um, the first one's really easy. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mark. Um, you are allowed to take with you um, one favourite book uh, from your childhood, which means a lot to you, perhaps, uh, that you cannot do without or that stirs great memories or something like that. But um, literally only one, Craig. That's it. What is it going to be? Okay. Well, it is a toss-up between two, but I think oh. if I was going to take one, I could only read over and over again, it would be Of Mice and Men. <gasps> oh, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Evelyn War. I, I um, Steinbeck, John Steinbeck. Steinbeck. Mm. It is, yes. <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's amazing. I, it sort of started my obsession with Steinbeck. Steinbeck so I read, yeah. I read all of his books after that, particularly his short mm. stories. It was the, um, I just thought it was amazing. I'd never seen any, I've never read anyone at that point that could write landscape, and just what he was able to do with his words, just sort of take you there, yeah. and just put you in that place. I found amazing, and then. I, yeah, I, I just find it really moving as well. And it doesn't matter how many times I read it, I, I find it moving. And I just, yeah, it's just a beautiful book. Yeah. And do you still read it now? You still dip into it from yeah, time to time? Yeah, sort of dip into it. You know, sometimes I'm going away on a, yeah. on a trip and I think, oh, I'm not going to be gone too long. I'll just take a, a short book with me. I'll, I'll take that one for sure. Yeah, that one. Yeah. All, and To Kill a Mockingbird as well. I love To Kill a Mockingbird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah I've, I have read To Kill a Mockingbird. I've, I've never read of Mice and Men, actually. I just, you, know, you love it. I, I you intrigued. never read much Steinbeck. Yeah. Obviously, you've got the big ones like The Grapes of Wrath and things like yeah, that. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But if you, if you get, get his collection of short stories, you won't be disappointed. This, this, they're, they're beautiful. I remember Fantastic. doing it at mm. school, I think. Yeah. It's, it's Le Lenny, isn't it? What's, uh, yeah. Is that right? Lenny. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> the, uh, the, Butch. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's a great, okay. yeah, great story, yeah. All right. Okay, so here's the other one. You're allowed to take a movie with you as well. So okay. we'll give you a, t a big TV and sound system to kind of play it on and all that oh, kind okay. of thing. Good. Um, the power and you're supply allowed... is your problem, though. You have to sort that exactly. out. Exactly. So. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you can take with you. Um, oh, I'll, I'll throw the I'll throw the genre thing out. See what you think of this. So you're out. Let's, so you can take a, a horror movie and uh, a kind of sci-fi or fantasy type movie, and and one all-time classic. You know, whatever it's going to be. What would you choose? My horror one. I'll take an American Werewolf in London. Oh, <gasps> interesting. Place. Yes. Mm. Sci-fi. <laughs> let's see. Um, there's always a, there's a film that comes on that I. Yeah, it's not really sci-fi. It's uh, all right. What is it? You know, I am I am Legend with Will Smith. Oh yes, mm. yeah, yeah. Whenever that comes out, and it's not because it's mm. more apocalyptic than it is um, sci-fi. Yeah, but counts as sci-fi. Oh, it just gets me that film. I just sort of stay tuned in and watch it every time. Yeah, it is good. Yeah, yeah. But uh, ultimate sci-fi, yeah. sci-fi, yeah. sci-fi. I mean, it's based on a sci-fi novel, isn't it? It's in uh, yeah, Victor Glantz's would... legendary sci-fi masterworks, or whatever they call that yeah. range. Yeah, um, I can't remember who wrote it now. Was it? I'm getting weird. My names was it Olaf Stapledon or someone like that? I am legend, but it wasn't that. But I'm going to Google it just to be know. totally sure. Shame. I don't. I don't know. Um, I am legend. I Pure sci-fi. Um, Martian. It's great. Oh, it's Richard Matheson. Uh, yes. Yeah. 
Um, no. Who's Cypher, who's Cypher one I like? Yes, it was. Richard Matheson. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen Sign, Signs with Mel Gibson and Joaquin Phoenix? Yeah. Oh, that's yes. Film, yeah. yeah, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go, I'll, I'll go for that one for my sci-fi one. I'll go for science. Let's go for that, yeah. M. Night yeah. Shyamalan, isn't it? He's, uh, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he's done some brilliant films. Yeah, Those the, real twists. The village is, is also excellent as well. Yeah, yeah, where, yeah. yeah, where yeah. You, you get the... It's got sort of two twists in it, isn't it, that one? Yeah. And, uh, did, he, it's, did he do The Shape of Water as well? Uh, no, no, that I don't was Del so. Toro. Um, but uh, Shyamalan recently did... Uh, is it called old? But they they go oh, to yeah. the Saw beach. It. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, Great. yeah, yeah. I, I enjoyed that one. A really sort of trippy mm. idea, but it, mm. yeah, it was brilliant. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, it was yeah. good. I don't think yeah. I've seen that one. So that's like, did did you say a horror one? American Werewolf in London. Yeah. Oh, American Werewolf in London. That was it, right? So let's get that. So we've got I Am Legend, American Werewolf in London, and. Um, and signs. signs and signs yeah and signs brilliant okay i love that right it's brilliant okay so you're also allowed to take with you um yeah. and you can kind of preserve this in uh in a, in a sort of you know a, 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 a sort of live form if you like so you can take the whole performance with you um a, a play a theater production again that you cannot live without and you can just little literally flick the switch and all the little actors are there on that night, on that day, doing their performance for you to enjoy as you contemplate the infamous darkness of cosmic blackness. <laughs> it makes it sound so uh, cheerful. Mm. I, me and my wife saw a play a few years yeah. ago called The Inheritance. Um, it was on in London and it was, um, I guess, it was one of those plays that you had to watch in two halves because it was sort of two, three hour mm. plays was all one story and it was it was it was sort of centered i mean it wasn't a very cheery topic it was centered around the aids epidemic and um the length that some people went to 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 help the people that you know that suffered from mm. that yeah and i remember sitting down thinking seven hours well this is going to be you know i'm going to get through this good luck seven hours. and i could have sat down and watched it all again the minute really? it the performances were just extraordinary wow. and 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 the the way it was staged, it, it was just beautiful. So I think if it was going to be that I could only watch one thing, that would be the yeah. production that would keep me interested for infinity. Yeah, yeah. And it's I mean it's a long, long as well, well, seven yeah, hours. So yeah, so fill up yeah. a you know best, exactly. best part of a day. You know, <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, day, I mean you've you got know. the rest of infinity then to yeah. kind of get through after you've watched your films, <laughs> read your book, and uh, and then the last one is um, is 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 a musical album. Of your of your choice, and again, we'll give you the kit to play on, so it will sound pretty awesome as yeah. the as the as your asteroid floats lonely, just with this soundtrack of whatever it's going to be. You see, that's a tough one, <laughs> because I love my music, but mm. if I could only listen to one, ooh, okay. I mean, I mean, other, other scouts was making yeah. dumb because I'm I'm not going to pick the Beatles, which was my other choices. <laughs> but I'm going to go for yeah, a stranger Billy Joel. Billy Joel, really? I don't know, I don't know that one. Interesting. Yeah. Ah. Stranger Billy Joel. It's it's just it's just perfect. It's just a perfect album. I mean, there's yeah. so many. I was, I'm obsessed by music, so there's so many albums I could take. But yeah, yeah, that that would be the, the stranger. Album, so, yeah. yeah, I could just yeah. listen to it on loop a lot of the time. It, w- it will be a loop as well because literally yeah. you've only got that. That's it. So <laughs> yeah. Billy Joel is with you, my friend, for, for from from yeah. from the moment we shut that door to the rest of eternity. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you could, so I mean, there, there's some pretty depressing. I mean, I Am Legend is not yeah. the most cheery of films, is it? Either I'm going to no, say, but there's hope. There's hope at the end. Ah, like that. You see, so there is. Yeah. There's hope at the end. And um, I, I suppose actually you'd be able to sort of um, uh, kind of transfer your predicament to Will Smith's character's predicament, which is similar. But you see him go through the pain and not have to worry. And from your perspective, at least you don't have to deal with zombies. So exactly. there's always that, I suppose. It well, depends, depends where the asteroid drifts to. It yeah. might drift through a zombie nest yeah. or something. Yeah, that, zombie, it could happen. Zombie, Space zombies, uh, they're going to turn up, aren't they? It's, but I'll it's, be prepared. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I know exactly <laughs> what to do. You know what to yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> Except we haven't given you a, an axe or a shovel or anything to back them with. So, yeah. You know, and it would all be di- digital copies of stuff. Yeah. So there'd be no cases to use as weapons. Like oh, Carvin Easter's big yeah. weaponized axe yeah. thing. That would probably do, wouldn't it? It's not looking so good all of a sudden, is it, mate? <laughs> yeah. no, sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's my chances that that happens. <laughs> 
<laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much, Craig, for answering our little... Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, playing our little game there. You yeah, know, We normally do these things in the evening, and I'm, I'm with it on the evening. I'm kind of on form. I think I'm on the coffee come down now. I think this is why my, no, my brain suddenly stopped working. <laughs> Not right? at all. Not at all. <laughs> But no, thank you, Craig. You've been an absolute yeah, delight to talk brilliant. to you. Thank it's, you very uh, much. Really, really oh, enjoyed thanks, that. Thanks for talking to me. It's been so lovely to meet you guys. And I meant what I said as well. If you do, if you're interested in coming and seeing the show, let me let me know when you're down. It would be lovely awesome. to Yeah, we'll oh, get thanks, we'll sort we'll that definitely out. Definitely do That'd that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, good luck with rehearsals and uh, we look forward to seeing it. Thank you so much. Thank you.